Hello, my fellow dwarfs and dwarfettes. This is Mick Jury Duty Summons. And today, what I wanted to discuss was designing and building uh, efficient crafting areas. And so in the existing fort we have here, we do have a bit of a crafting area. So we have um, Carpenter's Workshop and Masonry Shop and uh, Craft Dwarf and whatever. But we have something that's, that's pretty functional for right now. Um, but what I wanted to do was built something that's going to be more efficient and more effective for these dwarves. So let's um, go down a few levels. There we go. So I've dug out a larger area, and I've dug it out with a couple things in mind. Uh, first of all, it's going to have a much larger uh, stockpile area for each set of, um, what they call it, each set of uh, workshops. And it's going to have an area in the middle for supplies. All right, and so um, let's see here. Also, these square areas in here, these are where I'm going to be placing the workshops, and there's going to be doors separating them. This will allow us to isolate a workshop if for some reason it becomes necessary. For instance, if you have a dwarf that's taken by a mood and it hops into a workshop and it can't find what it needs, and you can't figure out what it needs, needs they do have the chance of going crazy. So um, having a workshop like this will allow you to lock the doors and they won't be able to get out. And so they'll uh, sadly starve to death, but it'll keep them from killing every, every other, you know, killing a bunch of other dwarves in your fortress or needing to send the army after them or something. All right. So we got this area cleared out here. Uh, I didn't clear everything out of the stones yet because it was just taking forever because I don't have very many idle dwarves, <laughs> but we have enough for now. All right, so I'm going to build a, let's say, a workshop. Um, let's build some car a carpenter shop here. Yeah, those are, these are four by three, and I like doing that so I have a little extra space for doors to move around in there. Uh, probably probably five by three would have been better, but that's okay. You can, you can probably get away with just three by three, but in this case, I just decided to do it like this. Anyway, craft workshop. I don't actually... So what, I, what I've done also is I've created blocks. So you can do that the mason shop is make stone blocks. When you build a building with blocks, two things happen. One is that the building is more valuable and it makes um, so some dwarves who come by will see will occasionally get happy thoughts. So that'll keep your dwarves happy. It makes the building more valuable, which increases the value of your whole fortress. And you actually build faster when you build blocks. So I have decided to do that in this case. So you have some conglomerate marble blocks there. So we have one carpenter's workshop, which um, I think that'll be good for now. We'll do a, we're, and then we're going to do two mason shops. All right. All right, we'll let that build for right now. And the other thing I wanted to do is to set some of the stockpiles. Since both carpenters and masons build all furniture that's why I stuck them right next to each other here so let's take care of that so you for furniture stockpile and uh, let's just hold down shift and you move 11 so that's an 11 by 11 room so that's gonna hold a ton of furniture in that room for us okay and since we need um, since these dwarves are gonna need some supplies I'm gonna put a supply stockpile for the carpenter here so it's gonna be a wood stockpile we don't want it to be too huge because it's not necessary. And the other thing I want to do is a stone stockpile. Also, we don't necessarily need it to be large. We'll have to go with that size. Okay. And I'm going to change the settings here. That all wood, all wood's fine for there. Let's change the setting. We'll go down to stone. Uh, forbid. I'm going to forbid everything except for. Let's say is it mudstone. I have a lot of no conglomerate. So, uh, well, let's do marble. I think we have marble. Actually, now that I think about it, I can't remember what stones we have handy. <laughs> marble, yep. Marble is worth a little bit more than other stones because it can be used for steel. It's, it's a, it's a called a flux stone. It can be used for steel. And so things you make from marble are going to be a little bit more valuable. So you see the value of jet is 3. The value of marble is 6. So making things out of marble will make those things uh, more more valuable, even for trade and just for the fortress value as well. So we'll, we'll do everything out of marble if we can do that. I believe it's an 
economic stone. Okay. Yep. Hopefully, all my dwarves will rush up there and start filling that stockpile of full marble. Hey, look at that. <laughs> it's like magic. Alright, this is the workshop. There we go. As you can see, it was built using the conglomerate block, which is nice. Oh, and you can see the value of the conglomerate block is five rather than the three that it starts off as. Not a huge difference, but um, we're trying to keep dwarves happy here. <laughs> there we go. Are these finished yet? Nope. Need a mason. I think my mason is busy upstairs making more blocks for me, so let's check that out. So we'll cancel those. The other thing um, to help make your craft your crafting areas a lot better, a lot more efficient, is you don't want the the important craft dwarves to be hauling things. So here's dwarf fortress. I'm sorry, uh, dwarf therapist again. Uh, hit read dwarves to refresh it. You can see all the dwarves are pretty happy. That's good. And let's see, my mason. This guy right here. We want to disable the hauling on him. We don't want him stone hauling or wood hauling. Animal handling, no. Nope. Yeah, I'm going to take all that off except for furniture. Well, he's going to be making furniture. So we, we don't, we want him to be able to, well, it doesn't make a difference. We have plenty of other dwarves you can do that. So we'll do that. We'll commit the changes to him. And the other one we wanted to deal with was the carpenter. So womp, womp, prat. Let's turn the hauling off for you. You don't. There we go. And so the wood hauling is the wor thing I'd be worried about here because I don't want I don't want him running out there hauling wood. Um, another another hint to make the uh, woodcutter a little bit more efficient. He's also the woodcutter. Is to turn the wood hauling off the woodcutter because sometimes the wood the wood cutter will actually cut a tree down and then haul the wood back to the fortress and that is really inefficient for wood cutting. All right, so we'll commit those changes. All right, so those dwarves are going to be a lot more efficient. So let's check that out. It also means they'll be idle when you have, um, like if you want to designate a huge area for dumping, they won't, they won't go do that, which can also be handy. Dump those items. The other thing is, I think I'm really low on wood. Yeah, I'm really low on pretty, pretty low on wood. Um, let's see here. I do want to take down the carpenter's workshop just so we can take that space and use it for something else. And then remove the wood stockpile. There we go. Hopefully some doors will get on that. And who is he? I'm not sure. Oh, he's on break. <laughs> Dang dwarves. Alright, the Mason's Workshop is finished building blocks, so I'll cancel that as well. And the Craft Dwarf Shop, well, I'll leave that since we haven't replaced it yet. Um, I'll show you what I did here. Um, I'm using, I, I set up each of these different crafts on repeat, but I also did rock pots. Pots are used for storing food in, food and for making booze. So you need pots available to make booze. And so it's a good idea to have to throw that in the rotation like that. So every fourth thing he makes is a pot. Um, it is it is a good idea to keep an eye on how many pots you have, and if he starts filling up the stockpile, then cancel it. But um, running out of pots can cause some problems. I've seen I've had before I realized what was going on. I've had I've had uh, fortresses, you know, starve to death. Oh, and one last one last little update before I let let you guys go. I added a little bridge here so that way I can close this gate. In case there's too many, uh, too many goblins for the traps to handle, and I'm extending the number of traps. One thing I have noticed recently is that if a goblin drops into a trap and the trap kills him, it'll cause the trap to jam, and so uh, one dead goblin per trap. So if the invasion is pretty large, you're going to need a lot of traps. Um, oftentimes, on a full out invasion, traps are not. Um, practical to take out the entire invasion so you'll need something you'll need military or just need tons and tons of traps as we have here we have a bunch of traps so what we can do is you can lure you can lure you know three or four in here 
with the trap and then pull up the bridge the traps will take care of those three or four and then your dwarves will come out here and clear out the traps and the traps will be ready for the next three or four so you can play games like that okay have a nice evening everybody it's been 10 minutes if you guys have any questions let me know as you can see i think we have named all of the dwarves uh oh i guess we have a fish cleaner who we haven't named yet um yeah so if anybody wants to be a fish cleaner or plant he's really a plant gatherer because in this fortress we're not fishing because the fish are dangerous <laughs> all right have a nice evening everybody